So hi everybody, I'm uh, Jordi from France, from the band X Screen, and I'm the bass bass player and vocalist. So uh, X Screen uh, began in 2013 as a trio, and uh, when you released Unreal Existence two years later in 2015, it was said that you made an impact on the tech death metal scene. Uh, making a statement that you had something to share. Now, it's been 11 years, and you're about to drop your highly anticipated sixth album, Legend. Congratulations. Thank you, man. <laughs> what can the world expect from your newest album? A return to um, the, the old-fashioned albums. Uh, first of all, for um, the production with Sylvain, the um, main guitarist of the band, is also the producer. Yeah, um, we um, ask ourselves why uh, the old old albums from, for example, Metallica, Megadeth, uh, sounds uh, so huge, but with no all this technology that we we got. And um, for this album, we want to go back and use real amps and um, more uh, hardware and. Uh, uh, we don't want to go against uh, uh, all people do now. We, the last album, Hybrid Sense, was uh, uh, almost uh, a computer uh, mm -hmm. uh, process. Mm -hmm. But for this time, we we really want to uh, have this old sound. So it's not as uh, pre uh, precise. Yeah, it's not as so precise that. Um, that uh, Kemper or uh, Axe FX uh, can can do, but uh, I think it's more organic, mm. and that's what uh, what we want for this album: more organic, more uh, maybe more loud. It's a consequence of uh, of um, um. using uh, real hardware, and but uh, that's what we want. So you say you say more organic it it, it, it kind of does speak to like the genre and also the music that you have been creating over the past couple of years is that sometimes it is the imperfections that really make things unique it also helps to just create your own sound and own message you know using a computer can quite frankly sound just formulaic it could sound like celine dion on autotune it just like it just doesn't sound real at all so i get the 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 feeling and the uh, the inspiration to be more raw while at the same time being stronger and being more mm. polished in your own work yeah i think it was um it's not really fashion but uh, uh at the end of um the last 10 years it was very impressive this very unorganic songs it's uh, habitual it's uh, no. and uh, all the the song uh, you have different guitars different uh, guitar player for example mm -hmm. uh, different hardware but at the end everybody sound the same and uh, pretty the same and I think that uh, in the past years, very, um, very time ago, <laughs> all the albums sounds very differently because uh, all the hardware they use was the um, maybe the only uh, thing they got to sculpt the the sound. Mm. Um, it was maybe at uh, this, uh, at this era, it was uh, more uh, more personal. I think. Mm. No, you've been credited with, uh, quote unquote, uh, completely embodying the genre while showing some real growth from album to album. I had a chance to actually go through your library uh, yesterday and today and even get a sample of your most recent album, which I can't wait for it to uh, be released. By the time uh, the viewers and listeners are, are enjoying this, the album will have come out, which is uh, January 26th. How soon do you go from transitioning from one album to another when it comes to creating and writing? Because you guys have put out six albums in 11 years, which is a monster feat upon itself. Um, maybe it's because um, we um, we work together. We, we don't uh, 
record ourselves we uh, mix uh, it's sylvain is mixing himself and uh, the master too so we don't depend on the external people mm. we usually we let uh, the album release we see the reaction play some shows and two or three months after the release we are already thinking about the next album because it's a, an album, it's a long process, uh, maybe uh, it's a, a year of work. Mm. So if you don't want to to let um, four years uh, between two albums, you have to to go at work very soon. Mm. Uh, and we want this uh, uh, only two years uh, between uh, the albums. I think, uh, you know, when you release an album, you have um, a short lifetime, two or three months, and after that, the promotion and everything uh, just, just uh, come down, and uh, the album is not invisible, but you, you know, you, you, you kind of, on the internet, you just disappear a little, mm. so we want to not uh, make so many times between two albums uh, right. because of, of, of that but now uh, we are two uh, parents in uh, in the band so maybe <laughs> <laughs> it will be uh, more than two years uh, between two albums yeah so yeah actually uh, just just before we started there you mentioned that you were a, a new father and congratulations <laughs> um <laughs> does that change like so you and who else is is a, a new father or a new parent Silva. Oh, okay. Sylvain is uh, the father of a uh, three months baby. Three months. And how old is your child? Yeah. Uh, eight months. Eight months. So, yeah, a bit of a different uh, dynamic when it comes to work and home life, I can only assume. Yes. Yeah, uh, pretty, uh, not really difficult. It's different. And uh, <laughs> you have to sleep when you can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is very true. <laughs> yes. Um, so like the group of you and like you started off as a trio and then became a, a, a quartet or four four person band. The person who came in was I, I, I apologize, I forgot his name, but he came in to be provide drums. Who was your drummer before? Who who started off as drums? Uh, we start with Antoine, Antoine okay. Fouret. Okay. Uh, he was our first drummer. Uh, on uh, on in real existence uh, ascensions, mm -hmm. uh, our two two uh, first albums, mm -hmm. and uh, after that we got Michael Martin on uh, on uh, Molten Giant, and mm -hmm. uh, since Maestrom we are with Théo Gendron, our actual drummer, and. Uh, cool <laughs> <laughs> so finding finding a new bandmate can sometimes be challenging but it, it sounds as though that you guys all like get along you are basically like a family and you create uh together and like is there always encouragement when it comes to uh new ideas or a new sound or is it you guys kind of go your separate corners of the room work on something and then bring it to the center um the first uh, impulsion is made by by sylvain okay because i think when you create a very uh, uh a, a complex music it's pretty hard to to uh, have uh, four uh brain on mm. the on the same id mm -hmm. because uh when you play very fast uh have uh, to be um, very. Uh, you have to be have a very clean ID of what you want because uh, at uh, <coughs> three hundred uh, BPM, it's uh, <laughs> it will uh, very fast song like uh, yeah, like an old grindcore. Uh, <laughs> <song>. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, Sylvain uh, made uh, the structure uh, of the riff, and after that we made. Um, um uh, uh re reading mm -hmm. and, uh, for um for the main structure it's uh and when we add 
the bass, vocals, and drums. Sometimes the tricks just change, and we discussed uh, between us. For guitar, sometimes uh, the second guitarist Nico and Sylvain uh, are together to find some some riffs or you know, to see if it's uh, playable on stage too. Right. Because sometimes you have good inspiration, but when you you want to play it in reality, it's just unplayable. Yeah. So change that because we want that every songs are playable and the only limitation is the number of guitars and we have acoustic parts uh, this song is uh, playing on stage because change uh, right change it as, uh, every time but uh, technically uh, from the technique point of view uh, we have uh, all the songs are playable by us on stage that very important no, absolutely. Uh, there's been plenty of bands out there who have this great idea or had this great idea and be able to pull it off in a studio, but then to create that same sound or same feeling out on a live stage where more often than not, the songs get played faster than, than in a studio. It, it just becomes an utter mess because you you're now on the spot and something that took a long time to create or even you had help to create cannot be done successfully live every single time it's um i i don't remember who say that a uh, great guitarist say on stage you have to be at 50 percent of your capacity sometimes when you don't feel well or something goes wrong uh, no no i get it though like because you know when you're in a studio you can take a break you can you can grab a coffee yeah. you can go for a, a glass of water when you're up on stage no you you got to be able to pull it off so if you can be minimum 50 all the time mm. and still function then you're okay anything below that and you're just you're useless which is unfortunate mm. Who uh, playing live knows that it's very very rare that something goes well uh, mm -hmm. from the start and the end. There are always problem for in years problem. You have a uh, amps problem, um, a cable uh, with disconnected so something. It's a lot of uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cross your finger when you <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah. I mean the problems could happen before you hit the stage you could you could not be feeling well you could not get a good night's sleep you could be late to the gig or there could be road conditions or something like that so no uh, yeah I absolutely understand that I have never like I, I'm not in a position to tour uh, I, I, would, I would love to I think the road trip would be great but that's just fantasizing over uh, something that can be grueling it can it can define a band it can it can bring them closer together but at the same time like it's not all just like pancakes in the morning and shots of whiskey at night it's it is sometimes just a struggle just to get the gear up and running from my point of view a tour uh, when uh, uh, with our conditions we are not metallica we, they have different condition but from my point of view, a tour is very fun, but uh, not very, uh, just some hours in the day. The other day, you are four men who stink a lot, <laughs> trapped in a car, and they road, road, road. <laughs> yeah. You don't know where you sleep. Sometimes you sleep on the floor, sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it's fun too, but when uh, the tour, uh, we don't play very long tour, but when it's uh, like that from all a day, for example, it's already hard mm. so i can imagine the band would do that for uh, two weeks or, or a month right such condition and... yeah uh, it reminds me of did you uh, ever watch uh what defines us it's a documentary by uh foo fighters lead guitarist dave Grohl. did you ever watch that uh, no no so so what defines us is um it it talks about the tour life it talks about uh, bands being in a small vehicle with all the gear behind them and just smelling like hell and going out on the road but how that can make or break a band because it it kind of puts you in that uncomfortable position and makes you work for what you love and also can bring a band together how long have you guys been touring and 
dare I ask, what's the poor vehicle you got to ride around in? Yes, it's, um, we don't play show um, very often because it's France is uh, not a very uh, metal land. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> it's pretty hard, so we don't have... Um, maybe we had that uh, in Japan. Okay. As the condition, or it was a very great opportunity. Mm-hmm. But the condition of touring for us was very, very hard. Have to work uh, a lot with all the gear, uh, take the train, uh, metros, and wow, a lot of stairs <laughs> <laughs> with all the gear. Uh, yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> no clothes. <laughs> oh jeez. No clothes, and uh, the lung gauge was lost the first day. Really? Yeah. We start the tour with. Um, uh, uh, the two guitarists got the guitars, but no, the the stuffs. They will play on the LX and uh, they don't have it. I didn't have my bass, so uh, I play six string bass, and someone uh, share me uh, with very kind of him from the band down. Uh, except to share with me his bass, but it was a four string, so uh, <laughs> it yeah. was very complicated for me. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, you're you're missing an entire an entire tool basically within mm. your within your kit uh, just the first day because uh, in japan things worked very well so <laughs> they came uh, they can get back our stuff and uh, deliver at the venue the, wow yeah it's uh when our language come to japan everything is easy <laughs> between france and german it was, it's much more efficient yeah, in japan big surprise yeah. <laughs> and it's a it's the kind of event that can uh, make yeah a very uh bad mood mm. in the band yeah times with um when you're tired when uh things pumps wrong when you don't know where you're gonna sleep or, and you're lost in a country where, where people uh don't really speak a good English, and I don't speak a good English too, so <laughs> you yeah. can understand each other. And uh, yeah, but after it was a very good memories. Well, yeah, of course, uh, of course. There is also a lot of fun, of course. It's it's like holidays, uh, just uh, uh, with bad organization. <laughs> <laughs> you learn, you, you learn from the experience, yeah. and you just move on from there. Yeah. Uh, speaking of learning. Uh, your your band has also been credited with making sure that there is a philosophical message with each release. What is the driving force behind telling each story? Because it's it's more than just three hundred beats per minute. You you guys take it upon yourself to to not just sometimes tell a story, but to make a statement with the lyrics and also the direction of your music videos. Oh, it's. I think it's um, important to that uh, every song are not just superficial. They're just uh, not talking about a fight, uh, a guy with a sword, or just. Uh, no, they are always. Um, don't think of a message, but uh, like a like a tale. You have a. a it's uh, some things. I am not always agree with what I write. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's it's a question, and uh, that I oftenly asking myself. I don't have the answer, but yeah. I put it on the lyrics. It's just um, that is um, form is maybe epic or, uh, but like a lot of films, and, uh, it don't have a great um, subject for every album. There are a lot of effect, uh, and sometimes. Uh, Think of the old album. Sometimes maybe we say um, the opposite mm. in the mm. actual album because uh, we think different now. Mm. Those ten years, it's uh, our point of view uh, changing. And uh, all that. just speaking of the form, uh, I like to see our albums like a season mm. of a series. Right. Uh, that's why since uh, maybe uh, I think album now we links between our albums they are, are in this uh, say that they are in the same universe sometimes um, 
one album can have consequences on the next right <laughs> no no and that and that's good i mean it, it shows that you yeah like everyone uh Uh, hopefully takes it upon themselves to learn and to become more informed and to over time answer a question. I mean, and in, in the example you just gave, like one album can be a response to another album that you have already created. You're asking a question. Now you have an answer and maybe that answer isn't exactly what you're looking for, but that's the answer you get. Um, for example, with, um, And you getting older, you have uh, to face some uh, uh, lot of uh, tough things in your life. Mm. So that's why I think maybe the this album, Legend, and maybe Hybrid Sense 2 are maybe darker, or the subject are more serious. I think it's all about death, the purpose of life. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair. Uh, maybe a little trivial but uh everyone is asking it yeah it, this type of question yeah no absolutely and you know it's it's responsible it's it's sometimes it's sometimes it can be disheartening sometimes it can be emotional and even dark to start asking those questions when you're faced with your own mortality and you know other times I, like i know you guys have a sense of humor because i saw something on social media And I, I just need an explanation on the angry potato. What is this? Uh, it's because of um, when uh, at the release of Maestrom, uh, the eponym uh, song called Maestrom, uh, I, um, the first sentence I say is, I am the protector. Okay. But my English level is pretty low, so <laughs> I say a protector, and with the with the scream, uh, a lot of people hear, I am the potato, <laughs> 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 and they make fun <laughs> a lot with that. Uh, at start, I, I can be a little uh, upset about it, but uh, afterward, I will... Uh, All the band we take it with humor, yes, because uh, because it's funny, really. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. That so that shirt that um, I saw on social media that is real. Yeah, yeah. that is because because uh, I saw uh, that I was like I want that shirt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we are working on uh, on that, but uh, yeah, we, we want to uh, to sell it. Uh, yeah. yeah, for real. Yeah. I, I had well, a chance. I know, but it's an um, Eng English talking people who can have this drug because in France people uh, just uh, not a, a French uh, joke. Gotcha. Fair enough. <laughs> so I don't know uh, how we can uh, export this shirt, but uh, we will try. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you what, I'll buy a shirt and I'll start wearing it around town. <laughs> I actually had a chance, like I said, I, I had a chance to listen to all your albums. Maelstrom is actually uh, one of my favorite albums. It, it has a great sound to it. And it also, it, it shows like growth, like genuinely growth between um, your first couple of albums and then leading up to Maelstrom. And then um, your new album, Legend, again, like it, it does show that uh, you guys have learned a lot. You've grown in your skills, in your your lyrical uh, abilities, but also the fact that you are taking it back and being more raw and organic, as you said earlier. It, I'm really looking forward to the world listening and getting their hands on either through streaming or physically uh, the Legend album by your group because it is it is an accomplishment. And, and like again, congratulations on that. Very much, and thank you to notice that that uh, we try to not make a race uh, playing the faster as possible. And just want to put the more uh, lyr lyrical theme um, into that, and maybe reduce the speed of the some songs. Mm. But, uh, Hybrid Sun, we like, we love our album Hybrid Suns, but it's very. Uh, very dense, mm. uh, a lot of density, and um, 
um, maybe have a la some lacks of uh, reliefs. We think the the things differently for this album. Right. Yeah. So uh, with that being said, like every once in a while, a band will be criticized for a variety of things, and and some of them are our choices some of them are just petty but your band has actually received a little bit of pushback why align yourself with the Tau? 40k oh yeah <laughs> okay i understand uh uh so you, you can uh, i understand what you're saying but uh, i don't understand the question but uh oh yeah, no so so uh, it, it just on your social media i i because I, I i do a little bit of uh, you know i try to do my best to do a little bit of homework but uh okay you, toes. Ah, toe. okay yes yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. sorry it's just because in french we say le toe. oh <laughs> <laughs> not a, a thousand uh, not a, <laughs> yeah we are um, uh, sylvain is a very great f fan of warhammer and yeah. uh now uh, he sadly uh, put me uh, through <laughs> two, so, <laughs> so I play salamanders. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, are everyone in the band a, f a fan of Warhammer? Uh, no, it's uh, more uh, a thing of uh, Sylvain and I. Okay. Uh, Sylvain is very into uh, the the game. Uh, really. He got a lot of figurines. He, he played in. Uh, in championships and uh, but uh, for my part I just have some figurines of salamanders that not finished to paint actually oh. <laughs> I'm more into the lore oh yeah uh, yeah really uh, I really enjoy the lore I uh, finished to read the Horus Heresy ago it's on uh, 50 books <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah no yeah the lore is massive like they they've been at this for a while in incredible imagination creativity and you know it's constantly expanding um yeah. even even superman or the witcher himself uh henry cavill has stated that he wants to make a live action warhammer yeah. something and we we're waiting for that. <laughs> you, cannot, <laughs> you cannot how uh, imagine how. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I saw a fan uh, uh, fan film on YouTube called okay. Astartes. Okay. Was uh, just uh, five short videos, and really really amazing. Really. And I think it's, uh, the guy is alone. I don't, I don't remember, but it um, it put with image. Uh, <laughs> The devastating power of Astartes. <laughs> it's very. Uh, I have a uh, goosebump everywhere when I see <laughs> yeah. that. It's very, uh, very impressive. <laughs> yeah, no. Some sometimes it's those fan films that that sparks you know the motivation for uh, you know the powers that be or the people with money to really start mm. pushing towards something. So sometimes it takes that little inspiration for something to really get rolling. And I mean, like I said before, we already have Henry Cavill saying that he wants to do mm -hmm. something. He's dropping everything mm -hmm. to go do this. So this will be- I don't remember I, what kind of, I think in play Custodes, I think. <laughs> I think so, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So- And it's a, great, it's a great inspiration for Exocrine uh, since maybe two albums. Yeah, yeah, I noticed that actually, it's, yeah. The universe is, the universe is very dark. Mm -hmm. And um, you are reading a uh, novel. It's not, um, it's very neutral. There are no good people, there are no bad people. They, sometimes horrible things happen, but yeah. they always have a reason. Maybe it's not a good reason, but. Yeah, they, they a... believe in what they're doing, which is a great motivation <laughs> for anyone. Yeah. I'm I'm looking forward to what comes next because like yeah something's got to happen this the the universe and the lore behind Warhammer 40k is so massive like how can it how can it go this long with without something Hollywood esque jumping behind mm. it and pushing it but then again there's the worry of like okay so Hollywood's gonna jump into it. How are they going to screw this up? <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, well, well, yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I have a few questions for you from some of your fans, if you wouldn't mind. Jean asks, who would you like to work with in the future? Who would you like to work with or tour with? Oh, uh, really great question. Um, for work, I don't know if we can work with but we like uh the production of dave otero mm. who produced uh 
last two are aspire. Yeah, you know. yeah, it's a great inspiration for us, and uh, it put a lot of contents on uh, YouTube, so mm. it's a good inspiration. But uh, for band, there is so many bands we want to <laughs> to raise, yeah. and uh, not only on tech desk uh, bands, uh, but a lot of bands. We we were actually uh, lucky enough to to speak with one of the guys from Arcspire uh, a little while ago, and actually they I think they just came back from a tour. It might have been the Japan tour. I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, no, great guys and incredible music, not unlike your own. So yeah, yeah I uh, think they um, they bring lot uh, lot of things to make Ted this younger. <laughs> Another question: Christopher asks, uh, "Who writes your music videos? They are very entertaining." Uh, music videos is um, it's Sylvain. Oh, again. Uh, yeah yeah and uh we buy uh, we bought uh, a good camera mm. and we uh because um we didn't find in france uh, some people to work with us as a reasonable price yeah uh, in the band we have not no money <laughs> right <laughs> we're all working and uh things can be harder uh, at this uh, with that so we decided uh, to um the film by ourselves mm. that's why uh, some old uh, old video clips are pretty bad <laughs> artistic <laughs> they are artistic yeah, well, <laughs> we have to start somewhere so. exactly yeah <laughs> and uh, yeah since uh since maestrom we made uh, the clips uh, ourselves mm. we just uh, maybe uh, i think for maestrom we just had the help of a guy who can uh, uh, just f uh, film mm. But all the, um, the editing, peaks uh, and, and things made uh, by Sylvain. Oh, wow. For just immensely talented or just dedicated to the job. So, totally, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's really good for it, but it's, uh, yeah. uh, one, one more question from Danielle. Uh, she asks, uh, who does your album artwork? This time we work with uh, Armada Arts, Slaughter to Prevail, and bands uh, like that, mm. because we are really liked uh, his uh, work. And it was, uh, yeah, and, and the contact with him was very easy. Mm. He was very motivated when we, we don't, uh, are very uh, directive uh, with the illustrators. Uh, because it's um, we want uh, we want the illustration, uh, the artwork after uh, the composing and um, writing process. Hmm. For instance, uh, uh, it sees us, and uh, so we just ask him. We want a big monster with a, a little of magic and fire everywhere, and uh, <laughs> let him work like he want to do. <laughs> and the result is. Uh, is is great, I think. So. No, it's it's yeah, like it's it's amazing. Like it, with with AI art becoming more and more prevalent, like it is it is very much clear whenever something is is hand drawn, be it with a computer or a stylist or something like that. But the the work that goes into uh, your guys's albums is is like unique and amazing and like it is it is movie poster or even just like on the wall poster quality like i could easily see something like that mounted on a a, a, a kid's wall or a teen's wall or something like that just like as a piece of something to admire and to appreciate so it's 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 great work yeah thanks yeah it's a bottle first because we the story in the album are very epic, yes. generally. Yeah. So uh, we have to need to have this epic uh, artwork, of course. And uh, and uh, in this album, in Legend album, we um, can be in the mind of a guy who see this monster mm. and uh, how if he can feel uh, at the end first of powerful. It's uh, weak. well weak, <laughs> yeah, it's vulnerable, very very weak, and. Uh, I think it's important for us that uh, the artwork uh, is a uh, uh, transcription of that. You yeah. see, it's 
story is very huge it's uh, unbeatable but uh story we'll see <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah exactly yeah so legend like i said by the time this is released the album will be released it is uh coming out on january 26th and uh one final question from me is uh you know are you are you already working on something new or do you have a tour planned like what is in the near future for you and your band uh, we are looking to play uh, shows essentially on Europe mm. because uh, after COVID the uh, period is pretty uh, hard Yeah, and uh, I don't know how it's uh, how it's in Canada or but we have a lot of inflation problem in France so no no here here too yeah yeah life is getting harder so uh, it's a very blur for us so we actually try to find some show tour maybe we are working on it but uh, for the the months that are coming maybe for the end of the year mm. and we also try to to get to see you I'd love it if you guys would make it your way to British Columbia or Saskatchewan but uh, you know what it, if and when, like I, I have a feeling that you guys will uh, eventually be able to get to a point where you can pick and choose where you want to go with with ease. Because, like I said, your your work is incredible, and this new album is going to be amazing. And uh, like your already dedicated fans, uh, they're going to love it, and you're going to definitely find yourself with a whole bunch of new fans once uh, they get a, a a taste of the new album, Legend, which is going to be out now so congratulations yes thanks man. <laughs> and uh before i go again congratulations on being a new father and uh i certainly hope that you get some sleep uh, yeah yeah <laughs> it's uh, a strategical game yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that it is okay jordy uh thank you and uh you enjoy the rest of your day yeah thank you too Thanks for making it to the end of this episode. Big thank you to you for watching or for listening or for checking out my website, themediajack.ca. There is where you can find other episodes, other content that I create as well, a link to the Patreon where you can support my show, all my work directly. Also where you could submit ideas, suggestions, or maybe you wanna ask a future guest a question. Patreon is where you can go for all of that and so much more and also get a shout out just like Red Wolf Dawn, our executive producer for this month. Big thank you to you once again and check out themediajack.ca. The merch is there. You can get a really comfortable shirt like this supporting the Media Jack or my partner, the Iron Bikini. Or maybe you just want to get yourself a good mug or a gym shirt or something else that tickles your fancy, themediajack.ca. Take care.